Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at rhythmic chords and how you can practice rhythmic chords. So what is a rhythmic chord? Well, a chord which is moving in a rhythmic pattern. So there will be a rhythm pattern, there will be a chord progression, there will be a way of playing the chord and then your hands are going to come together to achieve a common goal which... I guess is to make people feel something, feel a mood, feel a theme and also dance at the same time. That's what chords can do. They can give you emotions and then they can also give you a theme and get you to move. Like So we never just hold chords like that and expect things to happen. We need to play them in a rhythm pattern and there are many ways of playing the chords on the piano but you need to know that whenever there is a chord or an inner chord progression there needs to be some kind of a rhythm movement which serves the mood or the goal of the song or the theme or the composition the best. So how we are going to approach this lesson will be through two rhythmic bars. There will be two bars of music. You will be having a rhythm pattern. So you are going to definitely improve your skill of reading music. At least the rhythmic aspects of music. Then we are going to take four chords. Play them together in a very good inversion combo. Okay. Then we are going to build different rhythm patterns. Based on the different pieces of notation which I have printed for you okay then we are going to look at improving our inversions our voicing also different ways of chord comping you can either play the chords as blocks you can play them as arpeggios you can play them in like a left hand right hand interactive or what I call as a percussive way like that you could also break up the chords Instead of taking it just like that, you could play it up, down or take a few notes there, one note there and so on. Another interesting thing is how you voice the chords. You, instead of playing, let's say, a C minor like this, you could play it like this. We call it spread voicing. Okay, so lots of chord comping patterns, or a, lot, a lot of chord comping styles rather lot of inversion theory how to put things together with chords and a ton of rhythm patterns in this video just to keep it as uh, concise as possible i have a lot more rhythm patterns waiting for you on our patreon page they have been notated so do consider heading over to patreon right after this lesson or during the lesson get yourselves a copy of the notes follow along and even after the lesson there'll be 10 rhythm patterns waiting for you, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 10 rhythm patterns, which are all very nice. I, I jammed on them and I think they sound really cool. So uh, on Patreon, you'll find all of this stuff waiting for you with my handwritten notation. Right, guys, without any delay, let's get cracking. Before we do, it'll be awesome if you could subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell icon for regular notifications. Give the video a like if possible. A share would be great. And leave us a comment with something you'd like to learn in the future and also what you thought about this lesson right guys so let's get cracking first of all let me look at the chord progression the chord progression i've chosen for this lesson is c minor then i'm going a flat major then i'm going g minor then i'm going b flat major so c minor could first play each chord maybe four times but before you do write down the chords write down as you see in the chart write down all the available chords c minor is a relative minor of e flat major so i figured let's just write down the chords of e flat major where c minor would be the six e flat f g a flat b flat c c is the six so this entire chord progression would be like a six c minor a four a flat major then a three G minor with respect to E flat major it's a 3 and then a 5 which is B flat major so that's the chord progression but it's not going to be very efficient for you to play it this way C minor and then bring your hand all the way and then play A flat major G minor B flat C so the root positions as we call them of chords which are which start with the root in the in the bottom and then build up 
are not preferred all the time, especially in the right hand, in this area, because it's not going to sound smooth for the listener as well. You don't want to play C minor and then A flat, just like that. It may startle or shock the listener and distract them from the actual melody of the song, right? Chords and the rhythm is generally there to serve and support the melody. So try to learn your positions. I've put down the inversion chart where... I we've mapped each chord to each chord in the most efficient manner. So if you start with C E flat G, you can go to A flat major like this because C is common. And then B flat D G and then B flat D F and that slides back. And then it's easier when and it sounds also a lot smoother right so the other way is you could start from e flat g c and then of course from g c e flat okay those are your chords so whichever shape you prefer go for that I'm going with this. Could also do. Let's just keep whatever works. So, the chord in the right hand, and in general, we play the roots of the chord in the left hand. What's the root of C minor? Well, C. The root of A flat major. Now, don't get confused. Just because you're playing C, E flat, A flat in the right doesn't mean you go and play C here. You should be playing A flat there. And then G minor has G in the bass even though there's like a B flat there. B flat, B flat. So don't let the right hand influence what you're doing in the left hand. The left hand holds its ground, plays the roots of all the chords. So I hope the inversions and the theory behind what we are doing in this lesson is clear. C minor, A flat major, G minor, B flat major. Back to C. Okay, so what's going to happen now is we are going to make these chords come to life. We are not just going to hold them we are going to play them in a rhythmic framework so first let's study the rhythm which you see on your screen right now i have divided the beat into two units so good way to know when a unit is divided by two is look at the quavers beam together you see at beat two there is a two and and beat one is just a crotchet or a quarter note that's just one beat two will be two and Two, two hits for beat two, then three, no division, just hit the crotchet. Beat four, just hit the quarter note. So one, two, three, four. Bar one. One, two, three, four. So that's how you're going to whack your chord. One, two, three. And bar two is very similar to bar one. It goes one, two, three, hold hold to the four because it's a half note also known as a minim so one two three four one two three hold do that with me two three four one two holding four and repeat two three four one two three and hold okay so now that you've got that rhythm pattern internalized Tam taba dum tum tam taga do tam taga dum tum tang taga do. So now we take the same chords with that rhythm pattern which we mapped out earlier. Tang taga dang tang tang taga dang. Right? And now try to play the hit points, what we used to clap and say on the piano with those chords. So let's just do it only with C minor. Pam pa ba bum pam pam pa ba ba. Now, you want to change it. The challenge in this exercise is change it every bar. So, bar 1, bar 2, you could stay on A flat, come back to C minor, 
If you wanted to do one bar, one chord over two bars, fine. Then upgrade your skills to two chords over two bars, C minor, A flat. Then you could repeat the same two bars rhythmically, but then play the other two chords, which are G minor and B flat major. So that goes, pam pa ba bam pam A flat, G minor, B flat major, and back loop, A flat, G minor, B flat major, and same. So you're reading the two rhythmic bars. reading those rhythms whacking the chords at the hit points and that's pretty much it playing the same inversions as earlier no so now on the left hand you could just hold the roots initially as maybe semi breves whole notes so start in that build up so just the roots of the chords semi breve in the left whole notes now minims half notes 1 2 3 right 1 2 3 4 now do the pulse i leave that to you you could do whatever pattern works for you in the left hand semi breeze whole notes or you could even do like a we will rock you i like that what i like about we will rock you is you could break it up as kick kick snare kick kick snare just like the original we will rock you There we go. Right, that's why we say we will rock you. Then another pattern you could try is more modern pop. You could call it the soca clave or tresio. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. of videos on tresio on our youtube channel so do give it a search with so what are the patterns again whole notes in the left then half notes then pulse toggle that pulse between your pinky and thumb we will rock you finally the tresio and that's it so the first strategy of playing chords was blocks right but you can also play the same set of chords as arpeggios so what is an arpeggio compared to a block a block is you just hit all the chords together with the arpeggio you go the same hit points but one by one notes tang you could make up your pattern if you'd like if you'd like to start the uh, phrase from the the pinky or the high note feel free or you could start it from the bottom i'm currently doing low middle high low middle so sounds very catchy it almost is it it feels like the arpeggio is now rememberable and the reason why people remember this song is because of that because of that phrase right so also maybe make it a wider chord with an arpeggio could add the pinky to play uh, from the c you could add add copy the c on top and get a more interesting arpeggio there we go okay 
another thing I like to do, uh, apart from blocks and arpeggios, is see how you can distribute the pattern, the rhythm pattern, between the two hands. So maybe it could be left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, again. Think I did what I just said. Left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left. I like to move my head so I know, okay, this is left side and that is right side. Sometimes some of us are directionally challenged. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four can stop at the four because there's a minimum one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four okay tiddy-dum tim tum para dum dum tiddy-dum tim tum tada dum dim tiddy-dum tim tum tada dum left right right left right left right right left left right right left right left right right left see the the same pattern is now evolving it was blocks then it became arpeggios and now it's turned into a very drum-like approach, if you ask me. That's why I call this syncopation or the hand comping. Uh, when you never copy your two hands, you just complement them. It's more like you're drumming or playing a percussion instrument. So that's one more thing you could do uh, over the progression. Another thing I like to do with my chords is, again, take the same rhythm hit pattern, but break your chords up so not fully broken that's an arpeggio you just are sort of semi-broken you can do that you could even combine broken with arpeggio and I did a nice arpeggio there at the very end or just do only broken. Now, let's not forget that the left hand could also do this pattern. Why should the left hand not have the fun which the right hand just had? So maybe do, well, you could do arpeggios. Or you could just do the roots of the chords and just octave them uh, to taste. This creates a bass line and maybe the right hand can go to doing what the left hand used to do which maybe could play the pulse. Dum is the a low root and ta is like the octave. That's what I've coined up right now. So dum ta ta dum ta dum ta ta dum dum ta ta dum ta dum ta ta dum and right. Same rhythm pattern but expressed in the left hand. Now, the left hand could also do like a chord voicing. You could play like a C minor spread out or higher. Okay, or it could do normal triad. And you could play a melody line in the right hand. This will take some practice. So just take a simple melody. I will quite like that.
So it's a gradual process. Slowly bring in fragments of a melody and then improvise further. Okay, so there's so many things you can do with the same rhythm pattern. What have we done so far? We've done block chords, we've done arpeggios, we've done broken chords. So blocks, arpeggios, broken What else have we done? Then we've kind of done a, a, a chat between the two hands. Tang, ta -da -dang, tang, left, right, right, left. Then we even looked at the, only the left hand playing the rhythm pattern as a bass groove with just maybe root and octave. Or taking the, the whole chord system in the left, arpeggiating. playing a melody line in the right hand right so so many possibilities guys so what i mainly wanted to share with you in this lesson is one rhythm pattern spanning two bars and then a couple of chords or in this case four chords can entertain you can inspire you can give you compositional ideas and be an insanely good piano practice or piano workout for about an hour so you could consider what i try to do on, on our YouTube channel, whenever I give you a video, is the intention would be that you practice and you become a better pianist and add this to your routine. So if you have an hour, you can always say, okay, this is an option for me over the hour. Yes, there are other things you'll be doing, but consider this and then try to expand on it. Try to make it your own exercise as though you made it you know and make a song out of this try and be creative as much as possible and as i tell students put a stamp on these exercises whenever you're given a job to do by a teacher like me don't just do what i told you to do in the in the lesson make it your own own the exercise that is very very important the exercise needs to transition to something you will eventually create so practice like that practice with that intensity practice with musicality so i have three more rhythms which i just want to tap out and help you count and what's going to happen is there are 10 more rhythms along with these three and the one i taught you so you can say about 14 or 15 rhythms waiting for you on patreon they have been notated handwritten by me it's taken me a fair amount of time so it'll be great if all of you watching this could actually go and get yourselves a copy it'll also support our channel and help the ecosystem okay so <clears throat> do consider heading over to patreon and i'll just leave you with three new rhythms just to clap it out and just jam along with that same old chords c minor a flat g minor b flat you could spice it up by maybe changing the inversions of the chords maybe changing the pattern changing the shapes and so on the next rhythm pattern you see there would be ta da ta ta da ta da 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 ta da ta ta da ta da 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 got it ta da ta pa pam pa ba ba pam pam ta da try to also wrap it out wrapping it out meaning no, not trying to be a rapper, but just imagining it from different perspectives. So, ta da ta ta da ta da 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 ta da. Give it different pitch uh, permutations with your voice. Uh, you can you can add lyrics if you like rapping as well. I I don't know how to write lyrics that well, and I don't rap, so I don't want to try either right now. So I will just do ta da ta ta da. Ta da 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 dum ta da ta ta dum ta da 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 dum ta da ta ta dum ta da 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 dum and the next rhythm dum ta da da dum one two and three and four dum ta da da dum one two three dum ta da da dum 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 ta da da dum two three four one ta da da dum Doom tao doom tao because it's a minimum it lasts longer doom ta da da doom doom tao and now the next one da ba da ba pa pa dao da ba dao da ba da ba da da dao da ba dao dao meaning minimum for two so 
one and two and three and four and one two three four okay those are the rhythms and the general way i like to practice reading and executing my rhythms on the body especially when i'm clapping would be something like if you take uh, the the earlier rhythm which i showed you one and two and three and four and so when the the note is holding on i want your hands also to hold on so one and two because there's a rest at two take your hand up because that's what you'll simulate for the piano as well one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and the next one one and two and three and four and wait and two and three hold why because there was a tie there right let's do that again one and two and three and four and hold two three four close a little faster doom ta ta one so you see you need to do it with a combination of physical ways with your voice doing some silly stuff uh with your hand doing you know these clapping movements this can really help you play do, never do these things in a schooled or a serious approach if you think serious you are wrong that's not the way to practice you need to think in a very child like manner in a like i'll do whatever i want to get this right manner and not care about anyone or anything around you you it's for you to get better so figure out a natural strategy an organic strategy to vibe with the rhythm okay the last one was dab dab ta ta do ta da da dab dab ta Da do, da da da. And now you're going to practice all of that on the piano and play the four chords of the past: C minor, A flat major, G minor, B flat major. In those rhythms. So if I do. Arpeggios. All of the ways, or the methods, or the comping styles, which I talked about with that first rhythm, you can do with the other rhythms. And there are more patterns waiting for you on Patreon. Do consider heading over and checking that out. So that was the lesson, guys. It's about two rhythms. You need to read those two rhythms. I thought two is better than one. Usually people read one and be happy. No, two is nice. So two rhythms, four chords. You could even do two chords. C minor, A flat is also fine. But then we did C minor, A flat, G minor, B flat. We started the lesson off with the foundational aspects of the chords, how to form it, how to inver do the inversions very well. Write it down. See the notes. then after that the rhythm pattern it was all about that one rhythm pattern right we just took that one rhythm pattern and did all sorts of chord comping strategies over that rhythm pattern blocks arpeggios syncopation percussive grooving between the two hands then some bass lines and finally we looked at chords in the left or the pattern with the chords in the left and a melody in the right hand that will be ultimate right guys thanks a ton for watching this video thanks for everything you're doing to our youtube channel do consider giving the video a like a share uh, a comment what you'd like to learn in the past what you thought about this lesson you could also share your recordings whenever you're enjoying them or proud of them Uh, on your instagram and tag me uh, jason zack or tag the school nathaniel school we'll be happy to interact with you share your video understand who we are talking to on on the youtube page which would be really cool so instagram is a nice way to connect with us and if you want something more structured more long term more organized with an array of teaching from technique to theory to ear training to composing do consider our music method course which is the flagship course we offer at our school we do quite a few instruments 
It's all on our website, NathanielSchool.com. It's all neatly laid out there. There are forms you could fill up and stuff like that. There are video courses, there are online courses, there are offline curriculum and so on and so forth. Have a great day. Cheers and see you in the next one.